that, that, that was it, right? You're, like, you're just in this kind of morass of, of, of that. you kind of like, what's your story? You need to tell your story. Um, and that's what we ended up doing. You, know, you end up telling your kind of townships, the kind of building blocks of like, like dark orange existence, you know? <laughs> This is because I remember you used to do sets about like how the toilets are outside where I grew up and all of that, and you have to weave these things that make you kind of a normal person in this kind of world because people don't know they they only see black people on like the news, you know, running away from like things, and so. So it was my responsibility to, to, to say, yeah, actually, I also, I also have a grandmother, you know, like all of that kind of stuff. And, and it, it was really important. And, I, it, and you'd, you'd have like other comedians, you know, who would go, because you, you, you kind of go, how do you tell this narrative? How do you, you know, what is the responsibility? Because then you'd, you'd get a comedian talking about how he stole a radio or how he can't swim. And, that, and it's always like, ah, ha, ha, I always told you they can't swim, right? And, and, and you know, you're like, sometimes you make like an idea ironic joke about like penis stereotypes and then people don't get it and they're like yeah I told you they're gonna big penis huh? you know so 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 it was always like a really crazy place a crazy thing to to navigate you know? but I guess well, through that you learn how to tell story and and how to represent and and um, so in that experience, I, I, I got to work with other guys. You know, everybody was also telling story, whether they're like a Jewish guy or a Muslim guy or whatever. And, and they'd come, I, I thought, this is great because we're getting this common kind of narrative of who we are. And I loved it. And I thought we need to make, we need to put this shit on television, right? And I, I'd watched a show called In Living Color from America. I'd loved Monty Python. And I thought, if we get all of these guys, I asked them, do you guys know how to write? And they said, no. Um, we, we, you know, some people worked at insurance companies. Others were just like loafers. And I said, okay, cool. You guys are writers now. And we... And we convinced, we convinced the TV channel to give us a show. And we, 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 it was like myself, uh, Joey Razdin, David Cow, Lois Ogola, Riyad Musa, Jason Cope, Koki Falco, Tsepo Mohale, David Kibuka. It was like Kim Engelbrecht. It was a whole thing. And we got this TV show, and it was a hit because there was nothing else on TV. It was called the Pure Manati Show, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, 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 shit, that, that shit was blazing, that shit was blazing, yeah. Um, and it, it, was, it was fun because, I mean, it was very stressful for me because I was a 24-year-old guy who never produced anything and I had to produce a show with grown-ups, it, you, you know. It was, but, but, but then it, it kind of hit, it went out and it, it did that thing. It, it did the thing where we were communicating something, we were communicating a time and people were reacting to it, not just, you know, just people across the board, old ladies, you know, Jewish old ladies, young Indian guys. It was, wow, this thing is working, there's a story. Maybe as a, as a nation, we weren't as cynical, we, we hadn't had Jacob Zuma yet, you know. We were still kind of like, yeah, naive, as somebody would say. But then that thing was, uh, I thought, wow, this is a great thing. We are finally telling a story. And I think at, on, from that level, there was a... A maturity in myself, even though it wasn't the greatest of maturities, but it was a thing of, okay, cool, this is, there's an edge, you need to kind of be honest when you're telling your story, you need to, you know, it has to be a truth from inside, it has to be a lived experience, and so on and so forth, and I thought, great, I'm going to now go tell movies, because I need to tell the story to a bigger, bigger audience, you know, and movies are just horrible experience, I don't know if they're filmmakers in here, but those things are scary. Because I work with a guy called Ronnie Aptiaka. He makes all sort of a lot of movies in South Africa. And he always has these pearls of wisdom. He says, Kiki, Kiki. One of them is Kiki. That's what he calls me. Kiki. It means Kagi, but he speaks in a strong accent. I think it's a Jewish accent. Is that a Jewish accent? Kiki, Kiki, what are you going to do? Right? Kiki, oh, geez, huh? I just don't know what your sister says. Sister, it's all right. It's, it's, and he always is worked out. I hope he's watching this somewhere. It's all right, Kiki. It's, 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 it's not easy, Kiki. Yeah. And that's what he, he says all the time. You answer the phone when, when the numbers come out. He's always like, oh, Kiki, it's, it's, it's not easy. It's a hard game, man. Eh? And, and, and he also says, he also says how, how, Kiki, Kiki, how do you, how do you, how do you make a, a small fortune in the movie business? Eh? And I say, how, Ronnie? He says, start with a big fortune, eh? 
So, so it's really hard. And, uh, and so we, I decided, okay, cool. Uh, me and my team of people, we were going to make movies. We we're going to make a genre picture. And we were thinking, we're going to make money, right? We're going to make huge amounts of money. We're going to get Joey Razdeen and David Carl to be um, uh, like bad boys, you know, Will Smith and, and uh, the other guy. Um, <laughs> And it was great, and every time we're like, yeah, we're going to do this, and we're going to do that. And we weren't necessarily thinking about kind of what truth are we going to tell, you know. We just thought, wait, we're going to make money, we're going to kill it, it's going to be a box office hit. And then it turned out nobody wanted to see David Cow and Joy Raz Dean as, 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 as cops, you know. It didn't work. I remember the Monday came, and, we, and you know when you do that, and then there's still, there's still the bank, the people whose money you took. And you need to go back there and explain to them. And then, wow, what happened? What, what happened? I don't know. Nobody wants to see Joey Razdeen. And, <laughs> and the other guy is just, nah, it's not going to work. And, and it, it's terrible, you know? So we, and it's like a difficult thing because it takes so long. And you kind of go, oh, man, why? So, so actually, well, I, I, I'm supposed to show you guys things. Sorry, I forgot. Because everybody's been showing things. I'm just used to this because this is my like, regular job um, is to hold a mic. This was, this was the Pure Manati show. This is the kind of shit we did. Good morning, the beast. Eh, eh, eh. I haven't decorated the morning yet, Toto. Morning. Good morning, the beast. I never said it was good. Oh, yeah, right. You're a genius. It's a terrible morning. It's a very terrible morning. Toto, have I written a speech yet? Most definitely, you're a genius. Of course, you have written the speech, sir. I spent the whole evening writing. I mean, you spent the whole evening writing it, and it should win an award. It's very good. Good, good. Now, tell me, Toto, am I the most powerful being in the world? What a question. What a question, sir. You are not only the most powerful being in the world, you are the most powerful being in the universe, apart from God, of course. Who is this God? Bring him here. Oh, it would be a bit tricky to bring him since he lives in America, sir. Yeah, that, so that was the, the sort of cross-culture of those two guys, Ugandan guys, really good friends of mine. The, Salah Saviti, he's now a big television writer in South Africa. David Kibuga is a producer on The Daily Show. And so that show created this kind of industry that came out of, you know, that's, uh, I'm going to take credit for that. Like there was a, a wave of comedy that came out and I also invented oxygen and walking and shit. <laughs> and, 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 and. I mean, I think also it influenced a lot of creatives, this show, because after, like, a few months after this, these types of sketches were on TV, you would see adverts that were using similar characters. You'd see some of the iconography. I don't know what that's called, but, yeah, well, thank you. That's... <laughs> the, yeah, this is... Um, <laughs> um, uh, so, 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 yeah, and, and so I was talking about going into, into films, and so when, when we got into that, we, we, we realized that it's, they cost, you know, you're going to spend a million dollars or two million dollars to make a film, and you're going to sell it to South Africans, and if it's, you know, movies like your big genre movies that are supposed to make money, they cost hundreds of millions of dollars, and you can't compete. So the only way you can do it is by, by telling, like, true stories that, like, a, a, you know, they feel real to you, like, honest stories where you kind of go, okay, I've lived this experience, I know these people, and so on. So I made, we made another film. We went back to the, to the money people, to the bankers, and we said, can we have more money? And they said, what about that last money? And we said, we swear, we swear, this, this, this one's going to make money. It's going to be, it's going to be unbelievable. Can, I, I didn't want to have audio for this thing. There we go. Um, um, but it's great. Look at that. Beautiful uh, students, South Africa of now, you know. It's me being like a middle class man and pretty much close to my, ex my experience of life and the politics and all of that kind of stuff. I said, let's do this thing. And if it people will resonate with this thing and we will be able to pay you back the bank and the bank said okay cool and we said yeah we've got we've got like great people it's gonna be awesome and they said okay cool they gave us more money and we went and made this thing and then opening weekend came it coincided with another movie called Black Panther 
Yeah, 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 yeah. That was, uh, it was, you know those Mondays where you're like, oh, go, 